When I reviewed my Creality Ender 5, it was shipped without thermal runaway protection. Well, today I'm going to show you how to burn a bootloader and to update to the latest version of Marlin. When I reviewed the Ender 5, I really, really liked it. Probably the main downside was the fact it was running a very old version of Marlin, and with that, no thermal runaway protection enabled. It's also missing features such as EEPROM to save your settings, and it makes it very hard to do modifications with the stock board. I've covered this before with the Ender 3, but I thought for the Ender 5, I would update that process and take you all the way from the start to the finish. The first thing we need to cover is how to burn a bootloader and that's a little piece of software on the main board that lets it take instructions from a USB port for updating the code. The good news is this is a once off. Once you've done this step, you'll be able to update your firmware as many times as you like by simply plugging in a USB cable from your computer to your 3D printer. The other good news is the components required for this are really cheap and you might already have them lying around. The links to everything you need can be found in the description below. Here I'm using an old compatible Uno. The one in the description is only a couple of bucks and works exactly the same. Now the DuPont jumper wires, let me clarify, you need five female to female and one male to female as shown here. And again, the link in the description is a set with more than you'll ever need. You can get the Uno and the jumper wires for less than $10. The first thing we need to do is to prepare our Uno by going to examples and then Arduino ISP and opening the sketch. We need to go to tools and set the board as an Uno because that's what we're flashing this onto. And then after that, we need to go to tools and set the port as whatever comes up. If you're not seeing a port, it means you don't have the driver installed. After this, click upload and in a few short moments, the sketch will be on your Uno. Our Arduino Uno is now programmed to be a programmer and a common question I've got in the past is can you use a Mega or other Arduino boards and the answer is absolutely. Look for instructions in the Arduino as ISP sketch when you open it up. You can also use a Raspberry Pi if you've got one spare but I'm not planning on covering that at this stage because these only go for a couple of dollars. Anyway, let's continue by connecting this up to our 3D printer mainboard. Time to flip over the Ender 5 and undo the four bolts holding on the bottom of the case. Just be careful when you undo the last one because the fan will still be connected and you don't want to tear the cables out of it. Unplug the mainboard cooling fan and you're ready to proceed. Now here's a crucial step. You need to hold up your Uno and align it so the ISCP headers are both facing upwards for it and the mainboard. With this alignment, you're going to plug in the five female to female DuPont jumper wires. The colors aren't important here, only the positions. Top left goes to top left, top center goes to center, and so forth. You're gonna plug them all in apart from the bottom right, and it's gonna look something like this. Now we take our remaining male to female jumper cable, and we plug it into the bottom right pin on the main board, and then into pin 10 on the Uno. Here's a shot with my finger out of the way. It should look just like this, and note that I've also plugged in the USB cable directly back to the computer. There's a GitHub link in the description of this video. You're going to copy it and then go to File Preferences, navigate down to the section that says Additional Board Manager URLs. Yours is probably empty, but if not, simply add a comma and then paste it in. This is necessary because the Sanguino board is not a common board and we need to install it so we can talk to our 3D printer. After doing this, we can now come up to Tools, Board, Boards Manager and type in SANG for Sanguino. It should come up and when you click on yours, you should have an install button. Obviously, I've already installed mine. After this is installed, close the dialog. Now we're going to go back to tools, come down to board and our Sanguino board should be listed somewhere down the bottom. We need to select it, then come back to tools again and this time select the processor, which should be the ATmega 1284p 16 megahertz. We need to go back to tools, down to programmer and change it to Arduino as ISP to tell it that we're using the Uno as our programmer. One final check from the tools menu to make sure we have the correct COM port selected. And then after that, we can come down to burn bootloader, select it and see the dialogue down the bottom of the screen. This should only take around 10 seconds to complete. That's it, the bootloader is flash and it's done with forever, which means we're finished with our Uno at this stage. Now it is normal to see a blank screen after flashing the bootloader, and that's because we've wiped the previously installed firmware, which means we're ready to install the new firmware. So let's download some files ready to install the latest Marlin. 
Just in case it wasn't clear, we're now finished with the Uno and we're plugging the computer to the main board of the Ender 5 directly from this point forward. A bit of housekeeping before we forget, we should go back to Tools, Programmer and set it to AV RS IP Mark II, which is the default. We also need to select our new COM port by going to Tools, Port and selecting whatever comes up. If you're not seeing anything here, it means you don't have the drivers installed for your 3D printer and there's a link in the description for that too. Next up, we'll get the latest release of Marlin, which is 1.1.9, link in the description for that as well. That's going to give you a zip file, and the second zip file you need is one of mine that I've prepared. There's a link for this for free in the description as well. Okay, here are the contents. On the left, we have the Marlin firmware, and if we look at all the files and then inside example configurations, once we go to Creality, we have a problem. There's Ender 2, 3, and 4, but not Ender 5. That's where my files come in. On the right hand side, we have the contents of my zip file, Teaching Tech Ender 5. You're going to select all of those and then unpack them into the main Marlin folder. It's going to ask you to overwrite two files, which you're going to say yes to, and this will set you up ready to flash the firmware for the Ender 5. Scroll down, find the Marlin.ino file and double click it to open the Marlin IDE once again. One final piece of setup, we need to come to Sketch, Include Library, and then go to Manage Libraries and search for U8GLIB. This is a graphics library necessary to run the LCD screen. It's the one by Oliver, and once again, I've already installed it, but if you haven't, you'll see an Install button there, and after you've done this, you can close this dialog box. I've done all the heavy lifting for you, so all you need to do now is click Upload, and hopefully after a couple of minutes, your printer boots up with the Ender logo saying Marlin 1.1.9, and most importantly, saying Ender 5 ready. Now hopefully you found that pretty easy, but it's not uncommon for people to find they run into very small issues, and my advice is to get Googling. Common things that you need to fix are changing the cable, changing the USB port, or changing the version of the Arduino IDE that you're using. Personally, I couldn't get the USB ports on the front of my computer to work, so I had to plug it in at the back of the machine, and then it worked first go. If you're planning to make your own version of the Marlin firmware for the Ender 5, just for reference, here's a list of the steps that I undertook to get it working on this printer. Firstly, I have to acknowledge Keith B, because I started with his Ender 3 configuration and configuration advanced files. I adjusted the machine name to Ender 5. I set the homing to X and Y max instead of min. I also set home to one instead of minus one for X and Y, and that's because this printer homes in the rear right instead of the front left. I had to invert the Z stepper direction, adjust the build volume to suit the taller 300 mm Ender 5 height, and I tweaked the PLA presets to something more common. Now the last one that was a doozy was the status screen, and here's a photo that I took before making the change, and here's footage of me painstakingly transferring pixel by pixel the Ender 5 wording over in Photoshop. After this, I tried to use the online Marlin tool for creating custom status screens, but I found it wasn't overlaying the imagery as I needed. Therefore, I had to adjust the ones and zeros manually until I got the right result. As you can see, the printer homes in the rear right as it should, and that means the LCD screen is reading that the value is 225, 225 instead of 00. The end result means when you print something, it's actually facing the same orientation as you saw it in your slicing software, which wasn't the case with the standard firmware. As you can see, my test print went fine, and I don't envisage any problems with my configuration files. I did notice some cooling problems on the underside of this part, however, pointing to the need for a future upgrade video. That's going to wrap this one up, and I really wanted to include installing a BL Touch all in one video, but I seem to be eternally cursed by things coming very slowly in the mail. Anyway, the good news is that means there's more end of five morning videos to come, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss them. Leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.